Okay, boxing fans, right now we're going to give a quick instant reaction post-fight to the controversial ending that just happened on Tommy Coyle versus Martin Gethin. This is a fight where Martin Gethin was definitely in this fight, considering most people thought this was going to be a walkover. What happened, basically, to give a quick rundown, is Coyle started well in the first round. In the second round, he got careless, as usual, with no head movement, no defense, and got clocked with a good shot from Martin Gethin, who's a non-puncher, by the way, even at domestic level, British level. But, um... That just shows you how bad he is, I think. And he went down like a sack of shit. And, I mean, he was lucky to get up. If he was a foreign fighter, he would have got stopped. But he got up, was all over the place for the rest of the round. Geffen sort of... He was sort of, like, going for the stoppage, but he wasn't. In the way it looked like, he could have done a lot more to, you know, try and finish that fight with the 20-odd seconds to go. Because, I mean, he was badly hurt, was um, Coyle. But he survived that round. And then the next round... Coyle was just trying to survive it, he lost that round, but then after that, Geffen never done a thing in the fight, and I mean, we're talking about a guy who obviously had enough power to hit uh, Coyle, even though he's a non-puncher, and he was definitely in the fight, he just didn't throw no punches, and then he quit at the end of the fifth round on his stool, saying, basically, what did he say? But basically that he had the... Um, a knee problem, oh yeah, me, me ears popped again, I don't know what that means, but basically, the way I look at it, I'm going to give the other side of the story before we say it's fixed, in the MFDS fight, he had some kind of base blood vessel in his ear, or a perforated eardrum, something like that, and he said, and then he ended up going down three or four times in that fight, and then he lost that fight, obviously by stoppage, in the Teddy Flanagan fight, he got bitched around for a long time, and then his ear exploded to like three or four times the size of a normal ear, and basically he was stopped on that, in that fight, and then in this fight, he, nothing, it didn't seem like either of those two, but he just said, yeah, my ear's gone, and then that was that, but the way it, the, the way the whole circumstances were around it, if you watch the fight, it just don't make, it just don't, don't add up really, it don't add up. Paul, what do you think, mate? I thought it was an absolute fix, mate. Mm. Farcical. And, okay, I, I, it's not me who's, you know, hurt me eardrum. I don't know what Geffen was feeling, but as you said, he certainly didn't look like he was in any distress, <laughs> shall we say. He didn't yeah. look like he was having any problems with his ear. That's he, right. just looked like, he just looked like a guy who, after the knockdown, thought to himself, oh crap, I wasn't supposed to do that. I'm supposed to let this guy beat me. I better stop throwing punches. That's right. That's, that's what it looked like. And yeah. in the post-fight interview as well, this is worth no, no, noting, he sounded absolutely fine. He, he didn't look like a guy who was in any great rush to see the doctor or any guy who was in a great rush to you know, go to the hospital or anything, which is what I had assumed you'd want to do if your ear is burst or whatever it is, he said. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it was, that's, I don't buy that at all, that he's injured, mate. He's either faked it or he's grossly exaggerated it because yeah. that he was not supposed to do what he done. That's, That's a right. fix, in my opinion. An absolute fix. Yeah, well, I'm just going to read out a... Because this is just our opinion. We, we're allowed to give our opinion. And you're allowed to have your opinion, which doesn't have to be the same as ours. But I'm going to give you the opinion of a British cruiserweight boxer. British title champion he was uh, recently. John Lewis Dickinson has tweeted, and I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going to put it up as the picture for the video. So, he has tweeted, I went into my first British title fight with a burst eardrum, boxed 12 rounds and won. Terrible ending there, and he's obviously talking about the Coyle versus Gethin fight. So, if he's able to go the distance with a burst eardrum, why couldn't... Martin Geffen. Now, maybe the, the answer is because he's got heart and Geffen does not. Maybe that, that that's a legitimate thing. I understand that. But under the circumstances, it just, it just did not look like he was injured. Maybe he was, and I'm wrong. But I'm, I think we can all agree on this, this case. If he is getting perforated eardrum after perforated eardrum after perforated eardrum at his age, he, and you know, against this caliber of opposition, he is not going anywhere in a boxing career, and he should call it quits. I think if he is not injured and it's or it's not as bad as as he's making out, 
and he's got no heart. We don't need, we don't really need people like that in boxing anyway. You know, getting recycled over and over again for people to beat up. So in in that sense, he should quit boxing too. And if he's took a, a backhand, uh, you know, um, money in the envelope, extra money to basically quit the fight. We don't need that in boxing either. So either way, I think it's time on Martin Geffen's career, in my opinion. It's up to him, obviously, but I, I don't want to see him fight no more. If under any circumstances, really. And Tommy Coyle versus Luke Campbell is what's next. And I think me, we, me and you, Paul, can agree we will bet the ranch on Luke Campbell knocking out Tommy Coyle. Yeah, Tommy Coyle, mate, I've never rated him, personally. I think he is a protected fighter. Sky hype him up to be something great. And even in fights that he's supposed to win easily, he ends up going life and death. He went life and death with that Bruzuela guy. Yeah. who Luke Campbell beat easily. He was he was winning the fight against Teddy Matthews, but then got absolutely sparked, wiped out, mm. clock cleaned, whatever you want to call it. It was a bad knockout in a fight that he was miles ahead in. I just don't rate him. I think Luke Campbell will absolutely destroy him if they do fight next, which obviously they will, because Sky have been... Sky and Mashroom, it's been on their agenda for a while to make that fight and hype it up. That's so, right. and uh, I will say this: that what's just happened tonight—that's not Tommy Coyle's fault, obviously. You know, he did show heart, getting up and carrying on fighting. Mm-hmm. It's not his fault that Geffen either bitched out or took a dive or showed no heart, whatever you want to call it. It's not his fault that ha- that's happened. But the fact is, if Geffen would have put any effort into trying to stop him, he would have stopped him, and Tommy Coyle would have lost mm-hmm. because Tommy Coyle was ready to get knocked out, and Geffen didn't even try to knock him out after knocking him down. That's right. And it, it just, it stinks, basically. It That's absolutely right. stinks. That's right. So bring on the whole show in the Casey Stadium, or some open open top stadium, apparently, next. Better not be on pay-per-view. And to be honest, it's going to be a one-sided fight. You know, standard matchroom fight. You tell us what you think about this fight, and... I hope everyone is going to enjoy the boxing that's on later, and also the boxing that was on before this as well, as in the um, Macau card, because they were really good shows. This one, not so much, but you know, it is mismatch room.